Welcome to the show. Bristol Sound Division 2018. I've been invited into the Decent Audio in Eclipse room, and this is Paul, obviously from Eclipse. We're just going to tell us a bit about these. I've got used the word unbelievable speakers because they are incredible. Uh, I've always seen photos of them, I've, I've even seen PR based material for them, but until you see them in the flesh, you cannot appreciate them. I've just been listening to them, and they're seriously good. So, Paul, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Please tell us about these speakers. Yeah. Um, the speakers we brought. Uh, for the show to work with Decent Audio are uh, our TB712Z Mark okay. IIs. So these are our top of the range okay. speakers. Uh, and they're paired actually here at the show with a, as a 2.1 system okay. using our TB725SW Mark II. Okay. So that's, this, that's the subwoofer. That's yeah. the subwoofer. Okay. So SW subwoofer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> our, our, our code's very, very simple. Uh, the the first number is the series number, okay. the second number is the drive unit diameter okay. in centimetres. Yeah, okay. So 7 series, 12 centimetre drive unit. Okay. Okay. 7 series, a pair of 25 centimetre drive units. Okay. Back to back. Back to back. I've, back obviously, to so I've seen photos of the internals there, so that's mm -hmm. basically a push. Um, it's a design yeah. to cancel. To cancel, yes. Yeah. 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 So they're back to back um, in with an aluminium rod, okay. holding them back to back. Okay. The key thing for us is that the subwoofer needs to be as quick as the drive units yeah. of our speakers. Okay. Uh, any delay, any overhang, you'll lose phase uh, and you'll get uh, just a, a timing issue. Okay. So the subwoofer's drive units aren't actually attached to the cabinet at all. Okay. They're sitting in a damp material okay. internally yeah. in yeah. the cabinet, yeah. as you've seen the cutaways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which means that you get no cabinet noise or vibration. Okay. It's completely dead. Uh, the external rings are actually aesthetic. Okay, yeah. So yeah. if you took those off, there's no screws. Oh, wow. So it basically so sits in there completely independently. It sits the in there held oh, wow. independently from the box. That's really clear. No matter how hard you run them, no matter how hard you run the sub, no vibration. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you get very fast, accurate, clean bass, okay. which is what we're after. The other thing that really stands out is that these are single driver speakers. They what, are. What are the benefits of that? With the single drive unit, you get full frequency range okay. um, and what that tends to come out as, as you probably heard when you were listening there, is you get um, pinpoint accuracy in imaging so across the, the yeah, yeah it's, so basically the single drive unit um, reproduces as accurately as possible what's being put onto the okay. recorded okay. medium. Is that because there's not a cro like, crossover There's no crossover, stuff yeah, like there's okay. fundamentally there is no crossover, okay. so it's, it's very simple it's as simple as you can make a, okay. a, a speaker, um, but the technology to achieve that yeah. is not just the drive unit, okay. which took us a lot of time to get right. It's the shape of the unit. Well, that's what I was about to say. There's nothing. Mm. There's nothing. Well, that's completely unique. There's nothing. Uh, unique no, simple about no. that at all. And that's not done for aesthetic value. Okay. That's done purely to achieve that maximum frequency range. Okay. Uh, so internally. Yeah, obviously it, the shape it is that means there's no standing weight. Okay. So you, again, you get no interference from okay. what the drive units do. So basically, it's like a, like a drive unit without a box. Effectively, with the box, obviously helping the fr frequencies and design. And exactly. Stuff. Oh, wow. Exactly. Really so clever. at the end of the day, you still need to move air. Okay. So the cabinets, obviously, there's air in. Yeah, we're yeah. removing air. 
it's rear ported okay. and the rear port is tuned to again achieve a lower frequency. Okay. One thing I noticed when, obviously when you sit in the sweet spot is they're slightly tilted back. Is that intended or is that just because of where we're sitting or? Um, that, that's intended but also where you're sitting. Okay. So okay. we tend to try and fire to your ears or slightly okay. above. Okay. Um, and also you notice that they're towed in. Yeah, okay. Again, we, we try and find a sweet spot in the room. Okay. Um, at home, if, the, if it's just yeah. you, then that, that works. Yeah, sure. If not, just slightly tail out. Okay. Um, so does that mean that these are slightly tailorable if you've got a smaller room or a bigger room? Exactly. Oh, well, exactly. Uh, and, and similarly, if you're sat closer, okay. you can create that headphone effect oh, well, if you want. Okay. Okay. So that's what most speakers don't have that at all. Obviously, you may be a little bit of adjustment in spikes mm -hmm. or whatever, but you don't have that kind of level of flexibility for listening position, do you no, not at all? No, no. So it's another unique, really great feature. Yeah, definitely. Anything else you can tell us about? Definitely. The one other thing, traditional speakers, um, you tend to hear a, a bass boom off oh, okay. the cabinet, you tend yeah. to get a cabinet noise. Yeah. That The reason for that is that you've they fixed the um, basket of the drive unit okay. into the cabinet. Okay, yeah. Once you've attached it to the cabinet, you're going to get vibration yeah, on the okay. wood. Yeah. Our speakers aren't fixed to the cabinet. There's no touch point. Oh, wow. So, so, so it's yeah. similar to the subwoofer in a sense, it's just exactly. kind of in there floating. Exactly, oh, wow. okay. exactly. So if you, um, these are fixing points. If you were to unscrew that. They're, they're for the driver? The head itself comes apart oh, okay. yeah, and yeah. the drive unit's held inside. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you would never ever, to, to look at that, you would never get any of that information just by looking at it. But to be honest, these are... They look space age and they sound, the technology has gone in there are crazy, but um, they sound beautiful, they sound absolutely beautiful. So can I listen to some more please? Please, yeah, thank, please. You. thank you. Well, the way we've got the sub set up mm -hmm. is that um, traditionally with subwoofers people think we, will, we just need loads of bass. Okay. The minute you put loads of bass in, you lose the integrity to the music. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It, all, all you should be re yeah, reproducing yeah. is the notes that are on the, on the yeah. recording. So the subwoofer's actually not working very hard in terms of volume, yeah. it's filling in and building up to the minute. Yeah. The, uh, the Paul was talking about, the one of the okay. strengths about the speaker is the speed element. Okay. Uh, it's, as you know, that the speaker technology or sub subwoofer technology, it's easy to make sound loud or whatever, yeah, okay. but the, to make the sound fast and the stop fast, that's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Without being able to do it, you don't see this complete two part of the instrument that like if it's bass or piano, it's a string hitting, then the body resonance. Yeah, okay. Body resonance is very easy to reproduce, but the fast part, that's very minute detail. Okay. Mm. If you cannot reproduce it, it doesn't make any difference it's, it, if it is a Stradivarius or the normal violin, okay. because okay. that is the character of the sound. Okay. So this, uh, the bass uh, solo play recording, captures that, uh, mm. the clear for the voice part, okay. Okay. and I'm playing it without the sub. Yeah, so if it's okay. flashing, that means it's muted, so there's no sub. <laughs> Can't concentrate on that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man, let me come up and ask, one thing please. One thing. <laughs> We'll give you the nod when it goes on. <laughs> this is with that.
just quickly, obviously yeah. adding the sub offer obviously adds more body, doesn't it, to the, the bottom yeah. notes. Yeah. So what you were just saying there, that, that kind of fullness, the boom, that is the characteristic of that instrument, is that yes, what you're yes. saying? Yes, Well, okay. the, the, the boom is yeah. like uh, mostly the second part, okay. but for the bass, that bridge sound in okay. the beginning of okay. the sound. And together, then it's a complete. But if it's slow, what we tend to hear is that the boom boom only. Yeah, okay. But that missing is okay. going to be that the bridge is Okay. Because okay. it was interesting because the speakers are only sounding very full range for starters. That was impressive. Yeah. And it's lovely and focused and clear and clean, is it? There's no overhang at all. Is no. So no, no. That's what gives you the speed, is it? The yeah. next note. That's uh, really impressive. Hideto's best description, and I think it's a brilliant one, is that the drive unit, what we're saying about going fast and yeah. starting fast, stopping fast. Yeah. Behind the drive unit is a, a, a mass anchor of zinc, okay. which basically gives you that dead stop. Oh, wow, okay. And the way to think of it is um, try and stand and jump high yeah. on concrete. Yeah, yeah. Do the same on sand. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. You don't okay, go as high yeah, there, yeah. and then you sink yeah. back in. Yeah. We're doing back, back, back like that, okay. so uh, that's why it's reproducing it so yeah. cleanly. And uh, that is not the standard part for any speakers. No. This is something you Yeah, that, that, okay. that okay. Uh, okay. anchor. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean, okay. Yeah. So it's like a unique element designed in there to mm -hmm. give them a, a really fast. Yes. And also yeah. the, the proper dynamics reproduction. Okay. Yeah. Pianissimo to fortissimo sound like pianissimo to fortissimo rather than piano to forte. Okay. Because so of the sound. Is that the whole design process to try and. Uh, everyone wants real sound and stuff, but. This, this, this seems more, more of an intimate type of sound. Yes. Is that, is that kind of really trying to represent like close, like maybe like a close mic instrument or something like that? Is that uh, well, of? intimate I think is uh, the good word, but I think in terms, uh, uh, if it's our philosophy, I think accuracy is okay. more for, uh, I okay. think, uh, the expressing yeah. proper, so, do you think? Yeah, so, super accuracy. Yeah, okay. so yeah. as an example, you're saying about intimate, it's, it's intimate to what the, either the performer or the engineers wanted yeah. to do. So the one demo that we do do on a multi-channel setup yeah, okay. is with a, uh, a guy who's who's specifically mic'd it up. So okay. you can hear what the compo what the uh, conductor's hearing. Oh wow, okay. So it's huge scale, yeah. but it's intimate to you as the as the listener yeah. that you can specifically choose where you can hear where the, where the musicians are. What I found really interesting between the two pieces of music is quite often uh, especially in shows, you can get good sound, but it can sound a little bit samey, i.e. it sounds like we're in the same place regardless of the music's being played, but mm. that was completely two completely clear, different recorded pieces of music. Yeah. You know, very much yeah. a spacious open piano, then a very kind of close mic. Is that a cello, was it? Or, yeah, or no, no, yeah, that's a bass. A bass, yeah, okay, yeah. sorry, very, very yeah, close mic. It was obviously yeah. complete, uh, just a completely different listening experience mm. for both of those pieces of music. So. Yeah. That to me obviously stands out because you don't get that a lot, and that's not something no. you hear a lot. I mean, no. That's really impressive to listen to. It's very natural, organic sounding. So yeah. I'm, I'm bowled over. It's a great demo, guys. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you. No, really so if you have one more minute, yeah, I've got too, as much time as you need. Yeah, this course. is a music. Uh, uh, it's just my personal preference. Okay. If you tell me just one track I can play, then yeah. this is I usually use. Okay. The, when we choose uh, the music to show this clarity as well as the sound staging, yeah. what we look for is something with a good layer of the, the, the sound stage. So, so not only left more, right, more expensive. Uh, depth, oh, wow. yes. sometimes okay. uh, uh, the height. So because uh, everything recording, not only with our speakers, but everybody, it's just a physical, um, uh, the, uh, the distance relationship to the microphone, yeah. to the instrument. Yeah. So if it is recorded in a high angle, yeah. then it should capture the, uh, yeah. in high mm, yeah. uh, uh, from the speaker access point of view. And I think this has got a very nice uh, quality okay. of the recording. But that was really nice yeah. mixture. Yeah, uh, so. Maybe I put the uh, hardware quite much, high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I would say, in, in that terms, the, the phrase is brilliant because if you listen to some people when they listen to speakers yeah. they say oh no speakers the, the sound's almost 3D yeah, yeah. it's not the speakers it's what the recording yeah, is if course. the speakers let that recording through yeah, yeah. then you've achieved your goal but it very rarely happens with a traditional box it's one of the hardest things to get actually mm. a, yeah. a, a, space, a spacious sound but it's also focused Exactly. With layers, as you said, where we were, I, you can clearly hear, oh, that's been wiped at a distance. Mm. Yeah, well. yeah, it's exactly. very rarely you get that. I find that really difficult to achieve mm. as well. Yeah. I haven't got these speakers, maybe that's why. <laughs> Damn, you got there first. <laughs> I knew Mark was almost there, right? his mouth was open. He was <laughs> So it has got the double bass, piano, and percussion with lots of small things, okay. combination. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
playing the bass and then the piano yeah. and the, but the, when the percussion comes in the the I think the strength of this speaker showing up when the sound actually decaying in yeah, the space. Yeah yeah it's lost there. You've got mm. you've got a bit of everything there. You've got real extreme subtlety, real delicate pieces of music mm. and then big scale comes in mm. and then you've got all the subtleties in between all that which is all precisely clear mm. now. Yeah. Obviously you can't do it in the show but at home you could dim the lights right down and mm. you, you would get you would lose all this wouldn't you from exactly. the visual exactly. view exactly. and then you, you'd be completely lost into so what and you don't know where the speakers are. Yeah of course yeah. that's what yeah. everybody's after. Yeah. That's what everyone yeah. is after. Yeah. Mm. And you've got great piano which is coming from you know feet behind the speakers there, mm. uh, and, and obviously stuff that's closer. And that was that's probably one of the best demos I've ever had at a show, guys. That is incredible. Oh, thank you. I want to clap. To be honest, you turned me into that. Really, hey, like, thank you. seriously, good sound, guys. Well done. That is like humbled in a sense that uh, oh, I've got to go and change everything. It's like wow, great sound. That's what this idea, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's a shame you can't just get one person at a time. You'd never get through enough. No. To give them that little experience would be a taste of. Uh, Good sound guys, so thank you very much. Thank no, you so much. No, thank really you. Appreciate that. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a bit like, wah! No, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's the truth. It's yeah. the truth. No, absolutely. It's fantastic. I'm so impressed. Highly addictive. Yeah. I should have said they, that before. That's true. Yeah. They are addictive. Yeah. There, there is, you, I've never listened to so much music since I've worked with a oh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the reason I play this, uh, this music is a little bit dark. Patrick okay. Serva have an album called Night Club. Okay. The reason I'm playing, we make this this uh, speakers for the home audio. Okay. But because of this nature, what you like, yeah, yeah. some of the recording recording engineer likes it. Okay. Because it, they can have a, such a exact control where they should uh, mic. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the yeah. distance, one inch difference, actually can make such a difference yeah, for the close to the far. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy, a uh, recording engineer, producer called Jim Anderson, I think he's won uh, about 26 Grammys. Oh uh, wow. Okay. And uh, this is one of his work. Uh, in 2013, he uh, won uh, the best recording surround one. But this is a stereo version. And um, uh, it has got the, the female voice, uh, oh, wow. jazz fantastic. trio. So. Yeah, fantastic. Bye, bye, Blackbird. No one here can love or understand me All the hard luck stories they all hand me Make my bed light the light I'll be home late tonight Blackbird Bye
the hard luck stories they all hand me Make my bed and light the light I'll be a homely tonight Blackbird That's incredible. That is incredible. What I, you know, was quite <laughs> surprised about thing. Yeah. You know, she sings so soft. Yeah. And when she's yeah. singing so soft, she touches the piano so soft. But when she plays for the piano solo, yeah. you hear the sound of the quite sharp noise. And that is the, 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 the thing we are talking about, the beginning of the piano side. Okay. Mm. So well, basically, you talk about the clarity of the starts of notes, yeah. really, that's what yeah. you're talking about. That yeah. coming through, yeah. that, because it's yeah. so transparent. Yeah. Yeah. What, I mean, obviously, everyone listens, listens to different things, don't they, in music and stuff. Like, what's so impressive to me is that you know, so the speakers are there, right, which they feel close, and yet the sound is way beyond them. Yes. And, it, and yeah. it's yes. not just way beyond them, in a sense, you get essences. The sound is there, mm. really big and, and colourful and, and clear. And yet it's completely defeating your, your eyes, which we're just seeing. Yeah. You, but you don't see the sound coming from those speakers. You don't yeah. even really need. I said about being dark. You don't need it to be dark to be completely a believable. That's just incredible. It's really great, guys. I, I can't remember that. That's and then nice. it goes big scale tall as well, yeah. it? with clarity, yeah. always yeah. clarity yeah. and stuff. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Can I get some video of it?